Well, Jim, I've often told you I wanted to come out here and get the Kenetrek story because I've heard it many times. We've done it on the podcast, yeah. the Kenetrek story. Somehow, some way, you decided I'm going to be in the boot business. Right. And I'm going to figure out how to build a better boot. On what mountain was it that yeah. you were sitting saying, yeah. I can make a better boot? Uh, the, the biggest thing, you know, with me anyway, my, my personal history is that I'm a hunter first. I basically have always had a love for hunting, you know, from the time I was just a little boy, you know, running, chasing pheasants, you know, with my father and mother, and uh, that's, that's just kind of who I am. You know, it's like a split in my brain, one's a hunter, one's an engineer, and so really the two of those have kind of married together. With the final part of that equation, the fact that I have horrible feet. Horrible feet. feet. Skinny, bony, blister prone, high arches, narrow heels. And so you can imagine uh, the, the difficulties that I went on when I fell in love with mountain hunting, sheep hunting, you know, a backpack hunt where you're just dropped off by a plane and you've got to survive, you know, on your own for 10, 12 days, whatever right. it is. My first, uh, uh, what I'll call wilderness, you know, doll sheep hunt. Uh, was in 2000 and I just beat myself and then I ended up not getting around on that hunt and went back to 2002 so it's really kind of an episode mm. and that was way north in the Mackenzie Mountains and it was brutal as you know right yeah. I mean sheep hunts are brutal I mean we say the story you know of Kennetrek where I you know we, we had a 20 mile day well it was actually technically a day and a half because we didn't get back to the tents until two in the morning <laughs> when I when I finally <laughs> when I finally killed my sheep, but it was a true 20 mile day with a 4,000 foot climb and crossing two rivers both ways, you know, pouring rain the whole entire time. It was just, it was just brutal. But I mean, I, I literally on the way back, I, I wanted to just fall over and let a grizzly bear eat me. I mean, I seriously, like, I was, you know, like you're, you're at the end of your rope and then it's way beyond that, right? Yeah. Like way beyond what you think you could do. Yeah, the end of your rope was back there a few miles. Right, and so just unbelievable suffering. And I mean, by the time I took my boots off at the end of that day, it, it's like there was gashes, not blisters. I mean, it was gashes. I mean, like wounds, like somebody had taken, you know, oh, just brutal. And so, you know, I mean, the healing up from that. So that, that was really a pretty strong motivator because I had, you know, what the industry said was the best boots of right. the day. And that, you know, I thought I had done my research and all of that, but I came up really, really short. And so that was kind of a driving motivation for there has to be a better way, <laughs> at yeah. least for me personally. There, and there must be other people that are in my situation, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, it's no fun, you know, especially when you're on a hunt like that. So that was kind of a motivator behind the whole, you know, the drive. I guess I would say a driving force, you know, behind the Kenetrek story, and why we selected uh, mountain boots in particular. Like I was going after a sheep hunting boot. As you can see now, I mean, we've expanded into a wide variety because of the success we've really had here with the mountain boot platform. We now offer, you know, safety toes and orthopedic and women's boots of course and you know heavily insulated pack boots and um, new military boot and new wildland fire boot so it is just really spread and that spread has not been so much driven by me it's really driven by our customers added to that whole mix is that i'm a notorious perfectionist mm -hmm. you know i mean there's just no way that i'm going to you know like the factories that we work with in italy and some of them will contact me and they'll say we can we just have a year that it's the same? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> no, the next year I want to do this and this and this. We were always enhancing. So this boot, you know, even though you've been wearing it for 10 years, mm -hmm. it's vastly different. I mean, there is many, many, many changes and, and modifications and the boot looks the same, but, right. but what's on the inside Function -wise is, wise yes, yes. Different. We're always striving to make it better. Yeah. What's the name right. Kenetrek mean? We actually came up with that. We had a really good attorney when we started from Billings, and, and uh, she advised us and said, you know what, like, because we came up with all these different names, and, you know, like I was thinking something to do with hunter or tracker or something like that. And she's like, nope, <laughs> you'll be sued, like, immediately, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, well, I created all these words, hundreds of them. There are already other companies, right? Like, yeah. you see all the drug companies, and you're right. like, that's a made up word. Yeah. Now I really see it. Mm -hmm. 
after having gone through that process, but we, uh, it just kind of fell into place. Kenna is Scottish for to have knowledge, right, or to know more. And track, of course, is South African for a difficult journey. And yeah. So it's to know more of a diff it just kind of magically fell into place and the rest is history. The other thing is every conservation group that I help with, volunteer with, go to their events, you have a presence there. Yeah, I mean, we, we, conservation we seems to be a pretty It big is important to me. I mean, like I say, I'm a hunter first and and I feel pretty passionately about, you know, our sport and and I try to I guess I, I try to stay a little bit humble and recognize that it's a great gift, you know, to, to live in this country and to have the freedoms that we have. Yeah. No other country in the world has the right. benefits that you and I enjoy you yeah. know, every day. We might complain about I didn't draw an elk tag or yeah. whatever, but first world problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like we are really, really lucky and blessed. I mean, yeah. to be where we're at, there's no question. Yeah. Well, I, I just want our audience to know, uh, your customers to know, our potential customers and hunters to know that you're not just somebody who said, oh, let me get some venture capital together here. I oh, think I can yeah. make a gob of money in a boot business. Mm -hmm. No. This comes from yeah, there. I mean, it has been my passion. I mean, it's been, it really defines who you are. You know, like I say, I'm a hunter, but um, really I am a boot guy, you know, at the end of the day. Well, for me, the, the testimonial I can give to you are in quest of a better boot is yes. I use your Mountain Extremes forever. And when you called me last year before I was going sheep hunting, you said, Randy, I'd like you to try these yeah. as your Mountain Guide boot. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. When I picked them up and I walked out the door of the showroom here, I'm like, I really want to take yeah, a new experiment a chance, yeah. <laughs> on what's probably my one doll sheep hunt of my life. Uh, but I'm so glad yeah. I did. I'm sure oh, the yeah. extremes would have done well. Yeah, I'm uh, sure they would but too. It's you, yeah. You you've now gained my confidence that your quest for the ever better right. tweak or change. Right. All right. I'm I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for you're very welcome providing a, a great boot for old cobbled up <laughs> mountain hunters like me. We'll keep doing so, it. All right. Thanks. You're welcome.